Now, in the last lesson, I showed how to define a class. A class is like a sort of a blueprint for an object. So just as you might have a blueprint for a car that defines what a car is, but then go and make many separate and different cars based on that one blueprint, so you can create multiple objects based on a single class. Now let's suppose we want to design some dogs. Each dog, that's each dog object, shares some behaviour because every dog woofs. But each dog object is also different because every dog has a different name. So in my dog class I write a talk method and when I ask the dog to talk it will say woof. And then I write a pair of get name and set name methods uh, that let me give the dog a different name, each dog object, by passing its name to set name and then retrieving whatever name it's got um, by calling uh, get name and that returns the value of the variable and this is important this variable which has got a, a little at sign followed by my name now i can create several dog objects so you can see i've done that down here so here i create several dog objects and i can give them different names but each dog will have the common behavior of woofing when i ask it to talk and then I can go and I can do the same thing with cat. So I've got a cat class up here. And look, it's got a talk method as well. But it returns meow because that's the noise that a cat's going to make. Now, I could then go on and create some cats. And that's what I've done, in fact, down here. I've created some cats and I've given them names. And so we've got some dogs and cats in this program. So let's see what happens when I run it. Uh, so open up the terminal. This is in... Visual Studio Code, but again, you can use whatever editor you want. And I'll run the active file, and you can see that I've got dogs with some, some names, cats with some different names, and they go woof and meow. And there's a couple of other bits and pieces in the code which uh, you can look at if you download the code archive, but needn't concern us here. Now, experienced Ruby programmers will know that there are better ways of defining cat and dog objects by creating a class hierarchy so that dogs and cats form part of a family tree of animals. There are also simpler ways of setting and getting variable values using things called attributes, and I'll explain class hier hierarchies and attributes later in the series. You don't need to know about them for now. The important thing uh, for now, though, is to pay attention to these variables, these variables beginning with the uh, at symbol, such as at my name. Now, when a variable begins with that symbol, that, uh, that at symbol, they're called instance variables. That means that they belong to individual objects. An individual object is sometimes called an instance of the class, the class that defines it. So the class is dog, but each individual dog, Bonzo and Fluffy, whatever they are, each individual object uh, is going to have its own value for that instance variable, which is why dogs have different names. Now, notice that in Ruby, I don't have to pre-declare my variables. This assignment here, um, so you can see this one where I assign a name to the variable. I haven't pre-declared the at my name variable. There isn't a variable declaration section. And that's fine in Ruby. That's the way that Ruby works. The assignment automatically creates the variable, the at my name variable, uh, when it's needed. Now, in the next lesson, I'll explain a bit more about what happens when a new object is actually created. This little course of Ruby is based on my book, The Little Book of Ruby, which is available from Amazon, and you can download the source code for free from bitwisebooks.com.